It's time to make the best part, Santa. All right, and then our very last block for this uh, pillow is Santa's face and hat. There are a lot of parts to this one, um, but oh my gosh, he's gonna be really cute. We have to be careful not to cut his little beard. That's the only thing. So also is um, when you have minky, whenever there's minky or velveteen, maybe it's the velveteen, it's probably the velveteen. It's just messy. That stuff gets everywhere. So just be prepared for that. All right, so there's a few important things on this one. So we are going to um, not center this. So if you are not using software, you're going. I'll show you how to do it. But um, you're when you automatically bring in our quilting design and then bring in the embroidery design, it will center. And we don't want these centered. So that right off the gate, I want to make sure that you're aware of that. Um, that there will be changes on that. And I'll go over it in software, and it's it's extremely easy to do. It won't be a problem. There isn't a photo. It's kind of funny. It doesn't show. Um, since some people do the quilting and some don't, it, it's a little bit different. But um, anyway, we're doing the quilting. In my opinion, that will make it easier um, so that we don't have to line it all up when we're cutting. We're still going to just do that quarter-inch seam allowance on the outside like we always do. So the cutting part will be very easy in my opinion. All right, so let's go ahead and go over um, the parts that we need for this one. So our main fabric, let me move all of these little messy pieces. See that stuff just gets everywhere. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, um, so for our main fabric, um, it is going to be the arrows. I'm calling it the arrows. I don't know what it's actually called, but it looks like little arrowheads to me, um, kind of. Oh, that's funny. So I have a string on the inside of my um, back, my my uh, fusible stabilizer. Can you see that? That's one thing you don't want to happen, and it's on there on mine. And this is kind of a light fabric, so that's kind of a bummer. I'll have to see if I can fix that. Anyway, so our main fabric for this one is going to be eight and a half by ten and a half, and like I said, it's that. Um, arrow fabric and it's um, very light cream colored um, arrows basically so eight and a half by ten and a half back it with fusible stabilizer try not to get a thread inside between the back of the fabric and the stabilizer like I did on this one so eight and a half by ten and a half for the main fabric and then we are going to jump right into Santa's face it is um, a very light tan silky solid and we're going to start with this at four and a half by three, four and a half by three for this light, silky solid, um, light tan, silky solid, four and a half by three. And then we are going to have, um, that's for his face, by the way. Then we're going to have for his, the, his shirt, for Santa's shirt, we're going to have this um, green with the green star fabric and it is six and a half by five and a half. We'll start with it at six and a half by five and a half. I did back mine with fusible stabilizer and six and a half by five and a half for his shirt. <clears throat> and then for the kerchief. So the kerchief is gonna be the red um, orange peel fabric. And we're gonna start with this at five by five. 5x5 five five for the kerchief, and I did back mine with fusible stabilizer, 5x5, five five. and then the same fabric, or the same design, but a different piece, is the also the red-orange peel, and this is for the neckerchief um, knot, the knot for the, the kerchief. Two and a half, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, really trying to get over this bug. Two and a half by two and a half for the kerchief knot fabric. And then we jump into that um, velveteen. So velveteen has a pile to it and it has a certain direction. So you wanna check that when you're laying it down if you can um, to have the soft side. I mean, just in case people walk up to your pillow and start touching it, right? <laughs> so for the velveteen, you don't back velveteen, leave it just as it is. For the velveteen, this one is for the hat. So this is this littler piece, the smaller piece is for the hat. And that is four and a half by three. Four and a half by three for the uh, red velveteen hat. 
And then the larger piece, which is also velveteen, and mine's messy. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, there we go. All right, so for the velveteen, for the, this is for the brim of the hat, and that's larger than the hat. So the brim for the hat is, we're gonna start with that six and a half by four. Six and a half by four for the other piece of velveteen, the larger piece of velveteen for the hat brim. Four and a half, or I'm sorry, six and a half by four. Six and a half by four. All right, and then for the little um, stripe on the hat, the hat band, that's what it's called, the hat band. It is, this is interesting, I don't know what this is. It says it's black embroidery leather, but it's soft, different, interesting. All right, um, this is for the hat band. It's black embroidery leather, and like I said, it's soft. It's kind of interesting. Oh, you know why it's the back? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, I am like not fully brain functioning with this cold. So it, the leather is is the leather side, the back is the soft side. Don't put the, the soft side on your hat unless that's what you want, <laughs> it's up to you. But the leather side is a slicker side. All right, and that is uh, four and a half by two, sorry about that, four and a half by two for the leather for the band of the hat. All right, and then we are going to have the minky. There's two pieces of minky. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. Oh my goodness, I just want to cuddle up with this right now. All right, um, for the minky, for the beard, the larger pieces for the beard, and that is going to be six by five, six by five for the minky. And again, there's a certain direction that this it's soft either way, honestly. But anyway, there's always a pile direction to it. So six by five for the beard, and it's that white soft minky. And then there's a smaller piece of the minky, and that one is for the mustache and the eyebrows of our cowboy Santa. And that one we're gonna start with that four by three. Four by three for the smaller piece of the white minky for his mustache and eyebrows. All right, and that's all the parts. That's the one that has the biggest amount of parts to it. And we are going to quilt this. So uh, we're gonna have a piece of batting that is seven by nine. So seven by nine for the batting, seven by nine. And then we are gonna quilt this with Western one in six by eight. Western one in six by eight. And like I said, there are some special cut instructions that will be easier for us because we're gonna quilt it. Um, but we are gonna have to move it right from the start. We wanna make sure to get it in the right direction, um, the right spot for uh, quilting it. And our final cut size is six and a half by eight and a half. We have to be careful not to cut the neckerchief. <coughs> um, anyway, lots of information on this. I'll go over it step by step. Don't worry, we're gonna make a really cute cowboy Santa. Hey everyone, I almost forgot we need a quick tutorial on how to move the Santa face and hat block on the quilting design um, since they are not centered. So I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials and um, I'm on my 7 by 12 hoop which is actually what I want. If you're not on the hoop that you want, you go up here to the Preferences folder, click on the hoop the size that you want and say OK, and then go up here to this uh, compass and hit H for hoop to make sure that you're seeing everything in your hoop. Now, I talked about this extensively in our very first tutorial that um, a 6x10 quilting design will not fit in a 6x10 hoop. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick here since I'm still getting questions about it. So a 6x10 quilting design will not fit, a 4x10, a uh, 6x8. So just think about the parameters of the hoop. So here is our hoop right here, and I'm using a 6x10 right now to show you. So if I go to Merge Stitch File and I bring in um, a quilting design, doesn't matter which one, this is just to show you. So. Um, let's bring in the 6x10, which I think is what we used on one of our first blocks. 
So right here, six by 10, Western one, double click on that and see how it is over the yellow lines and see how in brilliance was smart enough to tell us, um, I'm gonna turn red here and make sure she notices this doesn't fit. So the reason is because the hoop is six and five sixteenths by 10 and one fourth and the design is six and a half by 10 and a half. You can see all those numbers down here in the lower right hand corner. So it does not fit in a six by 10 hoop um, because of those um, placement and tack down of the main fabric. So right here, look, if I click on this first one, this is the placement of the uh, batting. And you can see that the part that's selected, I have number one selected, that is six by 10. Uh, number two, the tack down of the batting is also six by 10. And this is the steps three and four I was talking to you about where it jumps to six and a half by six and a half. And that is that quarter inch seam allowance on each side that get, makes it so it's now six and a half by 10 and a half, but it gives us our seam allowance, which we want. So if your largest hoop is a six by 10 hoop, it's really easy. You literally click on step three, click delete, step four, which now is step three and click delete. And now look, the design, all of the design, if I click on the whole design, it's now six by 10 and it fits. All right, so that's how easy that the solution is if your largest hoop is a six by 10. If you have a Bernina hoop, um, it's oval and it may not fit. I don't know anything about Berninas, but um, if so, you would just reduce it a little bit. You could easily reduce the, the size by just a bit. Um, so you could go up here to change by just a little bit. You could um, click and drag just a little bit to make it smaller, whatever is going to work for you. Um, but in most hoops, a six by 10 design will fit in a six by 10 hoop, but the quilting design is six and a half by 10 and a half. And that's why it doesn't fit. So let me show you, I'm going to click delete on this and show you the same thing with like the four by 10, which I think is what we used for the, um, Merry Christmas block. All right. So just, I mean, it, it's probably pretty obvious, but just in case, so same thing. So see how, even though it fits widthwise, it does not fit lengthwise. And it's the same thing because of that three and four right here. Number three, it tells you it's four and a half by 10 and a half. And the same thing with number four, four and a half by 10 and a half. So it's the same thing. You would click delete to delete those parts. And then it becomes a four by 10 quilting design. And then it fits. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Now on today's block on the Santa face, let me show you again. So if we go to a six by eight is what we need for this one, six by eight. So right there, six by eight quilting design. And once again, it's six and a half by eight and a half, and it does not fit in a six by 10 hoop. So if, you're, if your largest hoop is a six by 10, same thing, you would click this plus sign and click steps three and step four and delete them. And then it will become a six by 10 quilting design and it will fit. I'm gonna go ahead and use a larger hoop. Um, because I want to be able to utilize those um, preferences that my preference is to keep the steps three and four if I'm able to. If I wasn't, it's, you know, um, it's not a game changer. You just tape it in place. But um, since I use them for the tutorials and so forth, I do want to use a larger hoop. So I'm going to go ahead and change to my seven by 12 hoop and then notice that the red goes away. OK, so in my seven by 12 hoop, I can fit a six and a half by eight and a half design. No problem. All right. So I already have that quilting design loaded. It's the Western one in six by eight. And then we're going to bring in the Santa face and hat. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file. And I'm going to find the um, Merry Christmas y'all right there. Embroidery files. I use Pez for my machine. And we're looking for the Santa face and hat right there. Six by 10 Santa face, Santa at the bottom of the um, design options. So double click on that and it goes to the center. So notice if, if I click on that, Notice that it is in the center. You can tell from these black squares that the design is centered. Well, we don't want this one centered. We want it 
down to the lower left hand corner. And the way it describes it is, these files are not centered. Align the block embroidery file with the quilting design so that the bottom left corner of the embroidery file is touching the edge of the quilting design file. So right now I have all of two highlighted and not number one. So number one is our quilting design and number two is our Santa. All right, so with the, with the Santa perfectly centered from, you can see from the black squares here that he's perfectly centered. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna click this, um, the little plus sign here that has where we're looking and you can see it just moves the design down and then I can use the mouse button on my, um, the scroll button on my mouse to be able to zoom in further. And then if I want to move the design over, which we do, I'm going to go ahead and click anywhere on the stitching and you can see that it will line up just right. I, all I'm aiming for, so if let me move it away again. So see here is the placement and tack down of the batting and here is the placement and tack down of the main fabric. So if we bring it all the way to the outer edge, all right, we're just following those lines that are already there from our quilting and you can see it lines up just perfectly, all right? You can click outside to make sure that it's along those lines, and it is. And then I can go ahead and go back to this H button to zoom out and see that the design is um, over in the left-hand corner, the farthest point of the left corner, down at the bottom left-hand corner. Um, to be able to get the design. You can see that a little bit of the stitching will be in our seam allowance, but there won't be batting there, so it's not gonna matter. This is just to give us a little fumble point, basically. So anyway, this is all done. It was easy. You can see we just moved it over to the farthest point in the lower left-hand corner of the quilting design. And then I'm gonna do a file, save stitch file as, and I'm gonna name it Santa, Santa face moved quilting. Name it whatever you want to, to know what you did to remember and then hit save. And I'm gonna go ahead and send it to my machine. I go to utility, send to Solaris XP1 and it says file sent to machine. All right, if you don't have that, that option then you would just save it to a USB stick and bring the USB stick over to your embroidery machine. So that's how easy it is to move the Santa design and be ready for our stitching.
I almost forgot to tell you about my shirt. So my shirt is this cute Santa shirt. It's one of my favorites. I absolutely love this so much. It's such a fun, fun design. So this is by So Cute Appliques. They have several different of these um, Santa designs. Mine's a blanket stitch. It also comes in a satin stitch. And you can see I used Minky for his beard. Oh my gosh, it's just a really, really cute, fun, fun shirt. Um, and the shirt itself was from Fred Meyer, I believe. But anyway, I will add information under this video about uh, the shirt design and the cute things. I also added the wording and information on that. Um, so as far as your goal, how is your, how are you doing with your goal? I think I am 12 days in on this illness, 12 days that I have not worked out. And if you know me, it's really, really, really hard. My treadmill is calling to me and I want to, I want to go see some pretty places on my treadmill and, and walk and, and hear the um, excitement from the trainers and I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I am um, not running my body down. I am trying to just heal and get healthy and I've actually said no to several upcoming Christmas events that are coming up. And I'm, I'm saying no to it so that I can just focus on getting healthy and um, being available for my family. So uh, we're going to go to California and go see my grandkids. And um, I have to just concentrate on, on being healthy for that. And so I'm not going to be around a bunch of people when this flu bug is everywhere. And I'm not going to get it again. So anyway, uh, what are you doing for your goal and how's it going? <music>